Welcome back to my channel. This is Professor Asif Qureshi and you are watching Dr. Asif Lectures. Today, uh, lung pathology ka medium robin se ek bahut important or high yield topic start karne ja rahe and that is community acquired bacterial pneumonias. Yani ye community setting mein honge, not in the hospital setting and they will be bacterial uh, infection. If you remember my previous lecture, we talked about uh, this particular table. Um, kidar gaya yaar, wo table jis mein there were different uh, types and classes of yeah this one uh, categories of pneumonia so the first category was community acquired pneumonia caused by bacteria then there will be community acquired pneumonias caused by viruses and we'll talk all uh, of these we'll talk about all of these in the upcoming video so aaj ke video ka topic hai community acquired pneumonias which are caused by bacteria very very high yield topic so let me draw a beautiful star here Bacterial pneumonias often follow a viral upper respiratory tract infection. So this is a very important line. Viral infections are very common. And uh, at the top of the viral infections, yeah, uske foreign baad, as an opportunistic infection, there are um, bacterial pneumonias. Okay. Strap pneumonia, streptococcus pneumonia, also known as pneumococcus, is the most common cause of community acquired acute pneumonia and is discussed first here. The next heading is actually streptococcus pneumonia. It's the most common in the community setting. Okay. Pneumococcal infection occurs with increased frequency in two clinical settings. Number one, chronic disease such as congestive heart failure, COPD or diabetes. So if patients are um, having these chronic conditions, congestive heart failure, COPD, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease or diabetes. So this is when the uh, pneumonia and pneumococcal infection becomes very common. And the second clinical setting is congenital or acquired defect in the immunoglobulin production. So if there is any problem which is either congenital or acquired in the immune system. So for example, if there is immune deficiency syndrome, AIDS, or there is any other cause of immune deficiency, just may immunoglobulin deficiency. So obviously, if the immunoglobulins are not there, handling of the microbes, uh, particularly pneumococcus, will be disturbed. So these two scenarios you have to remember, which is pneumonia is uh, very common. Hai. So the point is that if the patient comes to the clinic, or patient uh, elderly a middle-aged person hai, with any of the chronic disorder it's not only the lung symptoms that the person is present to you with it is also beyond the lung symptoms so you have to look for ke COPD to nahi hai, diabetes to nahi hai, and koi immune deficiency syndrome to nahi hai. that's why these lines become very important for your clinics in addition, decreased or absent is splenic function, such as sickle cell disease. You know, in sickle cell disease, there are episodes of sickling and microinfarcts are produced and thus the splenic function is uh, disturbed in long run and spleen shrinks in size, so spleen is not working. So if a spleen is not working, such as in sickle cell anemia, yeah, agar kisi ki spleen active mein hoye, there are conditions just mein hum extravascular hemolysis ko rokne ke liye spleen remove kar dete hai. So in dono conditions maybe the persons are at increased risk of developing uh, pneumococcal pneumonia, not only pneumococcal pneumonia, but severe form of pneumococcal pneumonia to the extent of sepsis because uh, your spleen handles these organisms. You will recall that spleen contains the largest collection of phagocytes in the body and it's the major organ responsible for removing the pneumococci from the blood. So since spleen is not there, they will be like, oh my god, there is no one to handle us and we can do whatever we want and therefore septicemia happens. The spleen is also an important site for production of antibodies and if a spleen is not there, immunoglobulin will be low and if immunoglobulins are low, again these bacteria will not be handled appropriately. The presence of numerous neutrophil in the sputum um, containing the typical gram-positive lensin-shaped diplococci so this is how you diagnose them, the pneumococcal infection, uh, neutrophils, and the organisms in the sputum, right? But it must be remembered that strep pneumonia is part of the endogenous flora in many of the adults, 20% mein hota hi hai. And therefore, there can be false positive results. Na, hamari body mein pehle se hi hai aur aap us light pe dekh ke, oh, strep pneumonia, to ko khas baat nahi hogi. You have to correlate it clinically with the signs and symptoms. Isolation of pneumococci from the blood culture is more specific but less sensitive. So, um, nasal flora ya uh, respiratory secretions mein there are chances ke 20% vesi hoga. But if you identify it in the blood, that is more uh, more specific. Only 20-30% of the patient have positive uh, blood culture. So, that's why the specificity and sensitivity values are such way. Pneumococcal vaccines uh, containing capsular polysaccharides from the common serotypes are used in the individual who are high risk for pneumococcal sepsis. Kondo honge, jo high risk honge, ye wo bande hai jin mispilinectomy hoi for example, jo immunocompromised for example. 
um, particularly splenectomy, immunocompromise because there are different layer of additional layer of complexity. So just to give you an example, if somebody has removed a spleen, now we know that the person is unable to handle the encapsulated bacteria and we know that there are chances of pneumococcal sepsis, so it's better to give prophylactic vaccinations against strep pneumonia. All very high yield information for strep pneumonia. Okay. The next organism that we have to discuss is H. influenza, Haemophilus influenza. Both encapsulated and unencapsulated forms of Haemophilus influenza are present and they're both important in the community acquired setting. Um, the former, which is the, uh, the former is line ke liye kaha ja hai. The former, which means encapsulated, wo H. influenza is a capsule hai, can cause a particular life threatening form of pneumonia in children, often after the respiratory viral infection. So that's very serious effect. Adults at risk of developing infection include those with a chronic pulmonary disease, COPD, hair for example, cystic fibrosis, bronchiectasis. H. influenza is the most common bacterial cause for acute exacerbation of COPD. So all high yield. Encapsulated H. influenza type B was formerly an important cause of epiglottitis and superative meningitis in children. But vaccination has control it. So H. influenza, look, in every one setting, mein, the most common organism you must remember is the strep pneumonia, its all associations, and then uh, the H. influenza, particularly in children. Okay? Then the third organism, which is important in community acquired pneumonias, are um, a group called Moraxella catarralis. It's being increasingly recognized as a cause of bacterial pneumonia, especially in older adults. It is because now we have uh, high life expectancy, so we have a lot of old people around, and this has been observed that this bug is a common cause of pneumonia in elderly. It is the second most common bacterial cause of acute exacerbation of COPD. You are seeing that all COPD ke setup mein bacterial infection is happening, right? Along with strep pneumonia and H. influenza, Moraxella catarralis is one of the three most frequent causes also of otitis media in children. The next organism is uh, none other than the Staph aureus. It's an important cause of secondary bacterial pneumonitis in children. Secondary means it can be after a uh, primary viral infection. Uh, viral disease hui aur uske baad ye ho gaya, right? Measles hua ya koi influenza hua bachon ko aur uske baad staph infection, very common. A staph pneumonia is associated with high incidence of complications such as lung abscess in empyema, empyema uh, pus formation in the uh, spaces, right? In the plural space. A staph pneumonia uh, occurring in association with right-sided staphylococcus endocarditis is a serious complication of IV drug abuse. So if you keep on injecting a needle in your vein, then you are continuously inserting organisms in there. Uh, these veins then can take these organisms to the heart uh, involving the heart and from the heart to the lung involving the lung. So this is very, very common in IV drug abusers, okay? So remember, staff, IV drug abuser. So in the exam, they will obviously give you clues and hints and you have to reach to the right organism. Then the next bacteria you should remember is the Klebsiella pneumonia, the most frequent cause of gram-negative bacterial pneumonia. Amongst gram-negative, this is the most common. Uh, this pneumonia frequently afflicts debilated and malnourished individuals. So that's the category for this pneumonia and also alcoholics. It's strong, a straight away association. Thick and gelatinous sputum is characteristic because the organism produces an abundant viscid capsule of polysaccharide. Because of this, the sputum is very thick. So if somebody is alcoholic with pneumonia, thick sputum, think about Klebsiella. Although the overall cause is still is number one is wrapped, but in alcoholics, number one would be Klebsiella. Think like this. Even in alcoholics, because they are in the com community setting, I still think about strap pneumonia because that is very, very common overall. But if they give you pointers, then think about Klebsiella because this is found to be more common in alcoholics as compared to the general community. Pseudomonas serichinosa is the next bug and uh, um, it is discussed here with the acquired community acquired pathogens because of its association with infection in cystic fibrosis. Pseudomonas aeruginosa infection is commonly seen in nosocomial setting. Hospital setting may is other common hai. Uh, baad mein bhi hum discuss karenge hospital setting in videos mein, but it is also associated with cystic fibrosis. Uh, Pseudomonas pneumonia also is common in individuals who are neutropenic for any reason. Uh, there is less neutrophil, usually secondary to chemotherapy, right? In victims of extensive burn burns in patients requiring mechanical ventilation. So these are all hospital settings in which uh, pseudomonas aeruginosa is very common. 
histologic examination revealed organisms invading the wall of the necrotic blood vessel um, leading to secondary coagulative necrosis and pulmonary parenchyma is a pretty serious organism legionella is the agent of legionnaire disease uh, this organism and an eponym for the epidemic and sporadic form of pneumonia caused by this organism miltazultanam pontiac fever is related to self-limited upper respiratory tract infection caused by legionella and uh, legionella pneumonia um, is pneumophilia not pneumonia pneumophilia flourishes in yes, one, artificial aquatic uh, environments such as water cooling towers so air conditions legionella this is the association right the mode of transmission is thought to be either inhalation of the uh, aerosolized organism or drinking the contaminated water this is common in individuals with uh, predisposing conditions such as agar pehle se koi cardiac renal immunologic problem hai legionella se hone wala pneumonia may be quite severe frequently requiring hospitalization and producing a fatality rate of look at this 30 to 50 percent heavy heavy and pcr best testing are available so this is the latest molecular test which is available to diagnose legionella then the next organism in this uh, category is mycoplasma pneumoniae and this is particularly infection in children and young adults they occur sporadically or less local epidemic in close communities schools may military may agar kisi ko hua hai to ye kyunki close communities hai na school mein sare bacche ek sath khel rahe hain military mein sab ek sath reh rahe hain prisons ho gaye ya camps lage hue hain aur pcr testing iske liye available hai so ye sare organisms acha isme important baat ye hai कि एग्जाम में दे विल स्टार्ट विद अ पर्सन जो आपको क्लियर कट पता लगेगा कि इसको नमोनिया है फिर वो पॉइंटर्स देंगे कि वाटर कूलिंग टावर्स में बहुत रहता है इस तरह या तो आपको पता लगे या अल्कोहलिक है तो दे विल गिव यू सम पॉइंटर्स टू आइडेंटिफाई द कॉज दैट्स हाउ दे यूजली चेक यू इन एग्जामिनेशन फॉर दिस टॉपिक ओके now obviously um, there will be associated clinical features and they will be the uh, clinical features typical of pneumonia the major symptoms of typical community acquired pneumonia acute jo bacteria se ho raha hai that is high grade fever shaking and chills and cough producing mucopurulent sputum so that is typical presentation of the person sometimes hemoptysis as well because of increased cough right but usually high fever chills and rigors and mucopurulent sputum when pleuritis is present there will be also chest pain pleuritic chest pain the whole lobe in the radiograph in the lobar pneumonia agar pura lobe involved ho raha hai to we call it lobar pneumonia agar focal hai to so hum bronco pneumonia kehte hain so these are the two names ki aksar use karte hain aapko samajh mein nahi aata what is lobar pneumonia what is bronco pneumonia so if the whole lobe is for example affected lobar pneumonia lekin ek lung mein kahin hai is tarah se patchy uh, radio opaque aapko mil raha hai x-ray par then this is what we call bronco pneumonia the clinical picture is markedly modified by the administration of effective antibiotics treated patients may uh, be relatively afebrile uh, in in the very few hours of giving antibiotics identification of the organism and determination of its antibiotic sensitivity are very important so uh, therefore ye jo main yahan pe itna focus kar raha tha na ki kaun sa organism kaun sa organism kaise pata karenge obviously cultural chill karenge usme time lagega lekin signs and symptoms se aapko hint milti hai ki which organism it is aur uske against kaun si antibiotics aapne use karni hai less than 10% of the patients with pneumonia uh, severe enough to merit hospitalization so usually it's a um, opd procedure apun ko treat karte hain they are fine only some of them go to hospital and this is usually the group jisko sahi antibiotic nahi mili hai okay and obviously there can be complications like meningitis uh, empyema septicemia pericarditis and you think of anything right because bacteria are there in your beautiful body now bacterial pneumonia has two patterns of anatomic distribution this is important in high yield for the examination it can be either lobular bronchopneumonia or lobar bronchopneumonia so if you look at the diagram uh, which is 13 to 9 let's uh, go back and look at the diagram where is it where are you 13 to 9 this is 13 to 7 this is 13 to 8 and where is 13 to 9 this is 13 to 9 right good that's a very good representation if the whole lobe is involved lobar pneumonia if it's patchy this is bronco pneumonia very high yield picture because clinics mein naam bahut use hote hain so bronco pneumonia and lobar ye aapko bilkul clear pata hone chahiye in lobar pneumonia when the whole lobe is involved four stages of inflammatory response have classically been described the first stage is congestion uh, increased blood supply 
um, the lung is very heavy and boggy and the, then there is red hepatization stage which is because of infiltration of a lot of red blood cells there and a lot of immune cells so it becomes uh, a reddish red hepatization is what we call it on gross examination the lobe is red firm and airless sara ka sara zahir hai is exudate se bhara hua hai to airless hi hona na usne so if you look at the diagrams here 13 so this is acute pneumonia diagram you see how congested it is all filled with the uh, blood cells Else, right then there is a stage of gray hepatization that followed um, is marked by progressive disintegration of the red blood cell and persistence of uh, so this is subsequent to once these cells are there they get destroyed and then it starts becoming grayish in color and then the uh, uh, resolution phase occur and this is how it usually progresses in your lungs so congestion increase exudate uh, red hepatization then gray hepatization and then resolution but sometimes there can be complications like uh, pus formation and um, involvement of the pleura um in very severe cases some fibrotic tissue as well so foci of bronco pneumonia are consolidated areas consolidated areas of uh, inflammatory um, you know morphology and um, uh, they can be very well developed and very big lesions they can be small lesions so that's very uh, dependent on how the uh, spread of the organism is but uh, in a sense it will be composed of a lot of immune cells some red blood cells so it's logically it is neutrophil rich exudate Uh, in these areas okay so pretty easy to understand complications can be abscess formation uh, pus in the pleural cavity bacteria can spread anywhere in the body which is what we call bacterial dissemination so very high yield topic guys very very high yield topic so if you uh, if you look at this this is obviously a person who is dead now and you're looking at the um uh, the consolidation of the whole lung so you can't see any air spaces or anything this is this looks to me very filled uh, perhaps hard and this is all uh, air spaces are gone and this is all going through different stages of uh, uh, pneumonia right okay so uh, this is uh, where i will end this topic of community acquired bacterial pneumonias all bacteria super important next video mein phir hum baat karenge un community acquired pneumonias ki jo viruses se hote hain so till then take care of yourself